Good morning again. And um, I'd like to continue from where we have uh, in the morning. I have just give you a idea about the Univoc network only. Now I will go to the global challenge and how we see the challenge and how we will work together, I will to explain. But at the same time, I, before I forgot, I'd like to thank the translators, those who are doing a splendid job doing because without them I can't uh, really have the meet you have a wonderful discussion in the morning but I'm following them they are they are very really doing a good job thank you thank you for that now for the global context I think we all know that the world has taken a oath on sustainable development goals in 2015 September what is the goal about this is the goal there are 17 goals which whole world has decided to, by 2030 they will want to achieve. What is this goal? This is a new vision for people, planet, prosperity, peace and partnership. Why it is important to know that it is universal, holistic and transformative. Why universal? Because earlier Millennium Development Goal was not valid for most of the developed countries. The primary target of Millennium Development Goal was universal primary education and say, basic education and poverty alleviation. Many of the developed countries complain that this is the agenda of only developing countries. Where is our agenda apart from that? So this time the world realized that the agenda should be global and it should be for valid for all of us. So that's why it is universal with 17 goals where people, planet, prosperity, peace and partnership all together, economic, social and environmental dimensions. We have 17 goals I have said, but actually their target is 169. Now, among the 17 goals, two goals you will see, one exclusively on education. What is that? This is goal number four, is on quality education. What it said, entire world has taken this common you know, resolution to ensure equitable and inclusive quality education and lifelong learning opportunities for all by 2030. Keywords, equitable, quality, lifelong learning. This they will achieve. There are seven targets among this goal. Three targets are exclusively for technical, vocational education and training. This is the first time in the history it happened. Because time is changing and skill at the top of the agenda, technical and vocational education. There are four reasons why it has come. One, educational imperative. Country after countries, primary education, secondary education, then they are going to university education. There is no alternative path for a secondary education pass out to have other options. And what is the consequence happening? There is a huge dropout. You can't have so much university also and this is also not healthy. And we have a very educational crisis has come up because country has a good primary education and secondary education because of the agenda. So there is an educational imperative now to find an alternative. Technical vocational education is a very good alternative for this path. So that's one, education for work. Second is social imperative. Look at the world now. Everywhere, economic crisis due to that, youth unrest, revolutions. What do you say, this political conflict, everything is happening there. One of the major reasons is unemployment. You have seen out of upstream what has happened. Youth very much agile with mobile and others, but they have no jobs and they revolted and other things has happened. So the social issue means the unemployment, addressing that, and 
link up with technical and vocational education can be a very good path. The third is technological imperative. Because of technology changing very fast, I will come some slides on that, a person cannot be 100% guaranteed if they don't upgrade, reskill, and also take a new path or new occupation, new skill as per required. That is lifelong learning. And the last one, if the first time in the history of the world is happening, there is a skill shortage economic dimension to the problem where country where they are progressing there is a huge skill mismatch there are jobs available which there are no takers whereas there are jobs plenty of jobs there we are preparing graduates but that jobs already has no value i'm talking of mainly emerging country so skill shortage on advanced skill, high skill, innovation, entrepreneurship, integration, all these are coming up. So skill is on the top of the agenda, which has been reflected in the three of the targets of SDG goal, SDG 4. So UNESCO make this at the center stage, the policy now, UNESCO give higher priority. When we look at the any technical vocational education policy from the Univox side, we look at it on three angles. The first angle we call it economic lens. We try to see first whether that is responsive, efficient, connected to labor market. These are the essential dimension. Without that, you can't say that you are not complying with the basic compliances. But complying only economic dimension is not the answer. Because Many country has progressing well the GDP, but the country has rich and poor divides are increasing and it is not an inclusive society. So you need to have a equity lens or social lens. I can cite India, China, you say Brazil, South Africa, they are all emerging economy. Look at them. The growth rate, seven, nine, nine, sometimes nine percent, ten percent growth rate is happening. But look at the other indicators, rich and poor, poverty line and others, you will see another dimension. So you don't have only have to emphasize economic dimension. This is definitely the first dimension. But also we have to see growth must be equitable and distributed that by social dimension. But this two dimension is also not sufficient. We must have a third lens which is a measure or indicator for transformative. Like, what is the future te technical vocational education is going towards? Like today, I saw a, a like where we are heading. I think director of uh, Nicholas was uh, presenting, you know, where we are heading to. So where we are heading, if we do not know, then you are not transformative. So that's why we need to see what are the new element of this transformation. I will have prepared few slides on this, our idea of transformations. What are the transformative, where we are heading actually and where we need to go? The first thing I think we said is, you know, major first dimension is the lifelong learning. When you say lifelong learning, it is like people do not understand the gravity, you know. We have primary education, secondary education, higher education, technical vocational education. But we as an individual, we are individual. Look at that. We have passed through primary, secondary, then we have gone to university. In different phase of our life, we are going to different path. Have we seen so far an individual as a lifelong learner? Then you need to see that today I am in technical education, tomorrow will be a work-based learning, school to work, work to school, or I can be in university. After doing university, I can come back and again I can, you know, lifelong learning perspective I am taking and maybe I have a new occupation I am choosing and going for that. So it's a question of looking the lifelong learning as a meta 
meta mechanism where individuals are actually going through this process but our system so far didn't recognize one of the country is started doing this you know experiment now making every individual as an individual learner profile and they are keeping record that what kind of phases the person is going through in education training retraining and others and getting a pic a wonderful you know description of the whole the complexities so this is lifelong learning we need to integrate lifelong learning mechanism for that second one greening tibet which is a climatic change i think bus region is doing tremendous well eco friendly at the same time prosperous so we have poverty alleviation and sustainable development can go together that's our answer to that rather if you are not giving the greening dimension actually poverty will be increased later on because fossil fuel is going to be abolished and then what you will do if you don't take that course today now and the future job then public private community partnership i think here we are talking of private sector community social actors need to be engaged and involved and the last one we call it steaming tibet i think this is you might know that stem steam these are the two term very popular that is science technology engineering arts and maths must be integrated with tibet this is called foundation knowledge to cope with domain dependent transversal skill because if you look at the point i will come to the illustration the way the workplace is changing you have to change the competencies very quickly and when you are changing if your foundation knowledge is weak then you can't change i can give you an example in india many of the computer program program you know schools has come they what they are teaching c++ java or something they are as a training course for for 6 months 3 months and people are going there and then they learn the whole thing and they they got the job but when you look java being changed to a new language this is also an object oriented language and they say i don't know this and they have no idea how they can learn that language here the question comes how how a person can be developed in such a way today you have a c++ tomorrow you have a java next day you have another language how you will cope up so fast if you know object oriented methodology in real sense there are some basic criteria or foundation knowledge similarly for all the subject if your science is poor mathematics is poor engineering sense is poor do you think the people can change the occupation so quickly in engineering field so this was weak in most of the tvet program and curriculum where they didn't give much higher priority to science engineering technology and others there should be an optimum level like you don't have a like it is a replacement of university course no but foundation must be very strong so that's why why the foundation must be strong the workplace is shifting in a technology dimension three things happening divergent to convergent economy earlier it was mechanical engineer or electrical engineer or computer engineer we define civil engineer now you look most of the time we call it mechatronics nanotechnology space technology biotechnology is it a one technology no it is interdisciplinary and that's why the technology is changing so again the basic question will come in into our picture where to wireless this is the trend worldwide everything virtuals and the third trend petro based to bio based and what are the technology coming you see information and communication technology biotechnology nanotechnology mechatronics space technology and green technology you can add few more what are the characteristics of this technology first they are interdisciplinary in nature so you may be very good in in technology but you are very poor in bio but your real today 
progress if you are not biotechnologists you don't understand the similarity of the bio mechanism how it can be mapped into the technology and utilize it it can be very very difficult is tissue culture so many you know genetic uh, uh, fertilizer and other things are happening is impossible so interdisciplinary second it is oriented to research and development third it is required strong foundation and the last one it is a shorter life cycle we have to know as a teacher we are in a very difficult time times are coming where your retention of your knowledge is six to one year six months to one year and the poor learner had to adjust if we don't change our teaching and learning methodology and gear them to have a transversal skill both domain dependent and domain independent we are not doing the justice that's why i like your idea of challenge based education where i see you are putting the challenge from the reality and the day one a person has to be like self esteem empowered and know how to handle a challenge and then it is a transversal skill and this can help a person to whenever the change of technology will happen they will be fast runner and forward in that so for that reason we call it stem or steam should be much higher priority we have to give it in the curriculum so that secondary education when we are putting initial tivet or letter we have to keep that in mind why arts because arts was an issue came of entertainment you look at the entertainment and virtual world game this came the visualization creativity so some people thought how come arts will be integrated in technical and vocational education you cannot be a brilliant technician in true sense if you have a you don't have a artistic you know mind and creative and that spring i was in in one month or two months before in switzerland they have in nationwide they have started a competition on stem application in workplace you know on tvet projects and some people say that because of the arts they have a beautiful beautiful boots design uh, mobile design the students are are helping in in making that so what is the unesco univoc priority then our univoc priority is three strands because we cannot take so many things first youth and skill and we give quality and image of technical and vocational education one priority you know you are lucky in bus region technical vocational may be the is is a, is gaining so much strains and people are really taking most of the country this is not the picture it is a second class education if you don't go to university you have been not regarded as a as a you know you are taking real education so our turn is like to example like germany austria uh, like basque region we have to highlight how really technical vocational education can integrate innovation can be higher it is not handicraft only it is not you don't have to say that if you don't know any knowledge you can be in technical vocational education no it is we need that so that's why quality and image of tivet employability skill and entrepreneurial learning we want to add this to in employability skill and employability skill is three component foundation skill transversal skill and specialized skill without three you are not employable so the degree of uh, you know com content will be different but we need three of the component with entrepreneurial learning then lifelong learning which we are working on work base and school to work work to school the model the dual training and all this thing part on that tvet for sustainable development we have a very good document published is called practical greening guide and i like to see few like, uh, institution in basque should be a model for us that we are talking of a greening tvet institute whole institutional transformation compose of five greening campus greening curriculum greening community 
greening uh, values and all all this this basically we like to hear that there should be institute who adopt this one and make an example in the world and we will declare prize according to the performance that we will do it will be create a movement it is not just curriculum it is all dimension will be taken into consideration then we have a top up skill we have a inter agency working group we work with many international organization ilo oecd cdfop together to work on that ICT and TVET. I think there is no need to explain to you. You all know much better than me how this has been integrated. But pedagogy and technology integration, how it can be really smartly can be done, is uh, is we need to find out a ways and how this integration because it's not only pure technology. It is not only only pedagogy. It is a combination which has to work out like that. And then capacity development. oer blended learning and mobile learning virtual learning all this will come into the bracket this we can also coin like yesterday when i was discussing with the colleague from technica we call it smart tivet the one i think honorable director was referring we have to be smart flexible and others yes teaching learning has to be smart it should be delivered in different settings different ways stereotype of evaluation methods and all has to be looked from a, a virtual angle so gender is our cross cutting theme teacher is cross cutting theme our flagship program is tivet leadership which globally we organize every year we will inform you we organize regional tivet leadership program we think if leaders are not ready then difficult a country will not lead greening tivet guide and tivet forum so with this i say the last uh, because detail i can go to the more subsequent slide when you have the question is networking and partnership are the new strategic resource in the sdg era in the sustainable development goal goal number 17 is on partnership and world has realized if you don't have a partnership and networking this goal will be only on paper because these are integrated like in a country if you don't talk with employers ministries stakeholders and others similarly at the global level we need to do that otherwise we cannot achieve the goal in a sequence way so that's why we say the networking and partnership is a st new strategic resource and you will be glad to know this issue was raised by univoc in the international platform and they have accepted our argument that yes always we make a good resolution but never we thought how idea can be translated in the action without partnership it is not possible so i like to stop here and welcome any of the questions because there are a few more slides that there in related to detailing if the question comes i will show you accordingly thank you dr majumba um you said that there is a country working on lifelong learning opportunities could you tell us please which country is this it is it is a scandinavian country norway is working on that thank you hello again samal Welcome to Technica. Yeah. Uh, our uh, question is uh, about the relation of uh, South America's organizations uh, with uh, uh, UNEVOC. Uh, we would like to know what plans do you have for South America and how uh, could we, we develop a relevant role in this relationship of you with South American organizations, considering that uh, our, strength, our strong point is precisely the the same language and the, yeah. the our experience in uh, our relationship with some countries in south america thank you uh, yes a uh, uh, very good question i think uh, the issue of how uh, technica can be a good facilitator apart from taking the role of leading institute of univoc in basque region like you are already started with all ministries going together then your next step 
definitely not next step i will say parallelly we have to do in the spain also you have to see other region who can be the best univox center can be join in and at the same time in the euro and definitely because of the spanish language and this is the accessibility to the latin america i think you have also have to play how this link can be strengthened so there are many things we need to discuss together we have an idea like santiago office unesco santiago office in chile they are requesting us that in latin america region if we want to initiate spanish speaking uh, you know some initiative who can be the lead institution in the other region can play a important role and now because you are part of the univox center we will connect you with them one you know that duoc has already applied for univox center in chile the ministry of chile is coming to us i know the chilean delegates also involved in your training in technica maybe we can see that how this marriage can be done at the grassroots level to really lead so one of the idea was of a tvet forum in a spanish language so whether we can do and then when we will look at your biannual planning you have to prepare a biannual planning what you are going to do for 2 years you have to make short term plan if we look at that if you say that we want to organize a capacity building program on tvet teachers on innovations or whatever topic that you are planning then we will try to see if it is can be at the global level or regional level so that we can bring this countries here or you will be translated so there are many opportunities will come on the spanish language because recently mexico colombia uh, chile uh, so then others few uh, we they are all interested now they came to know on the univox centers and try to join i think that will be a very good which way canada is doing a brilliant way apart from the univox center they are also assisting us in bilateral cooperation with this country so there is a huge opportunity in my opinion but we need to work out a plan first i have an old question shamal yeah uh, there are some different uh, levels of collaboration and we've got representatives here from from different institutions from a uh, Uh, employ employers associations from some universities uh, from uh, institutions like the the bas government or even spri which is from your point of view in your experience uh, which are the possibilities for those different uh, uh, levels of collaboration to take advantage of being uh, or having a partner a uh, unesco univoc center in in the basque region I think the first thing you have started a very good promise to me man I am really delighted as I said to you that you are inaugurating Technica as a univox center but you make a seminar on the day and inviting all stakeholders tremendous good move you have to sustain that means whenever in the basque region we are conducting any program we will try to see the opportunity of stakeholder involvement because one of the role of univox center is to maintain and lead a national tvet stakeholder network because we cannot make number of institution univox center like there can be hardly 3 to 4 maximum in spain we can we can in future we can think but not beyond that then you will see there are thousands of institution maybe still there so how what is the role of the univox center will be you call a national seminar here bring all of them including spain to to learn from all this thing any topical issue it is a stakeholder network that need to be uh, need to be done if you ask me very frankly on that ground majority of the univox center doesn't understand their role very clearly they only highlight their institutional achievements not taking together all 
your achievement definitely is important but also making a network this is the first step even if i am successful towards that angle more we see that limitation of a univox center is they don't see much about how in the region or in the globe they can play the important role so it's not the question of only benefit it is also question of contribute it is a voluntary network there is no direct incentives but actually it is a wonderful network where you learn and also you contribute learn and contribute and building up a international mindset that how developing country developed country can work together on north south north south south block so here also i see a huge opportunity first you are the first institute in basque and in spain so in spain we have no knowledge yet we will contact you through through other part also through you when the application will come we will you have to evaluate and help us in doing that and make the network really solid then in europe your role is very prominent how you can we can make utilize of that and then i will see at the global level like latin america how we can work together in some cases we will do that so i think we had a lot of promise lot of plates and agenda will be there but we need to shortlist and prioritize the whole agenda this slides has got three component international center is in bonn germany our headquarters where my office is so definitely i will welcome all of you to come at least and see because our office is located wonderful facility given by germany it is a 30 store building 20 un organization together so it is not only univoc so you have unfcc you have unccd you have unu you have unv all can be really useful for you in future work like climatic change unfcc has a climatic change agreement signatories so we also have a link so whatever you need from the country point of view we can help you this is bonn germany our major work is planning organizing monitoring facilitating the implementation of univox strategy presently we have a univox mid term strategy that we are adopting and this year is the last year for adopting that so we work through focal points so there will be one focal points dedicated for for europe and the gentleman is called regional focal point who will be in touch with you that is the gens who is already has sent something with you this is important to know because ultimately the communication line should be very clear and you are feel free to write me anybody directly to me i will attend to on that then in europe we have a cluster cluster means some country being requested to perform the cluster coordinator roles presently it is germany only but i am distributing now to for this year it will be germany one is magdeburg unit which is in magdeburg area university and others they are very good at ict but they will look after only cis region your region will be part under uk simon magrath is leading from uk northingham university i will make contact and rest of the europe also will be under bibb in germany but these are only temporal i want you one day you take that responsibility of the cluster coordinator because you have just joined so i like to strengthen first on the ground being prominent by my road map will be you have to take that cluster coordinator role as a leader of the region on behalf of unesco univoc then the center coordinator you have declared center coordinator and your executive director as a boss who has will be always be informed but center coordinator has few functions to develop submit biannual report biannual plan 
then report, progress report, then every activity that you undertake has to be uploaded into the network portal. This is a, one of the criteria we make, how active is the Univox Center. Sometimes, you know, we have to know that logic. Sometimes it is, looks very silly when I say that some Univox Centers are there for 22, 23 years. Although actual formal we have started in 2002, it should be 10 or 12 years. So they are not very smart type because they are government, those who are only uh, not taking so much responsibility. It is very hard job for us to really activate. But those who are newly Univox centers, they are like a giant in my opinion. I can give you an example, Senai, Sena, uh, TAFE, uh, Brazil, CONIF, all are Univox centers, those who are coming, super. And I like to create a model of this institute as a uh, exemplar. So that way, apart from that, you can contribute in knowledge development, knowledge management and capacity development. So these are the architecture is there. More we will work together, it will be clear to you. But on the bottom line, I say that you are a valuable asset in the UNESCO Univoc. So I want ask question. If you have anything doubt, clarify it. But I am sure about one thing. You can play a very important role in the network and through the network, you can really contribute to the world Tibet system very effectively. Thank you.